Welcome to Bible Bites. Join us on this journey as we go through the book of 1 Peter. In this Bible Bites, when we study 1 Peter, we're going to be following this kind of general outline. It's kind of a five-point breakdown of the book of 1 Peter. And today we're going to be looking just at this salutations part in verses 1 and 2. Uh, later we'll be getting into the Christian's response to suffering as we move on from chapter 1 verse 3 all the way to chapter 2 verse 10. And then we'll look at the Christian's response to unjust suffering as we continue from chapter 2 verse 11 through chapter 3 verse 12. The Christian's response to suffering for righteousness chapter 3, verse 13, to chapter 5, verse 11. And finally, the greetings and benediction that Peter concludes his book with in chapter 5, verse 12, through chapter 5, verse 14. Uh, so once again today, we're going to look at the salutation there at the opening of the book in chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. So let's take a look at it. Chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. Peter an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who are elect exiles of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, in the sanctification of the Spirit, for obedience to Jesus Christ, and for sprinkling with his blood. May grace and peace be multiplied to you. So we see right out of the gate, the author of this book is Peter. And he identifies himself as an apostle of Jesus Christ. Uh, and what he's doing here is just introducing himself, who he's writing the book, who's writing the book, and his authority. That his authority comes from Jesus Christ as a designated apostle of Jesus Christ. And so this letter becomes very pastoral. It's it's Peter, and he's writing, as we're going to see here, to these churches that are spread out and Peter has a heart for these people he's writing to. He has the authority to write the book as an apostle of Jesus Christ. And so he's going to write this, and we're going to see who's he writing the book to. And we're going to look at that in more detail, but he's writing the book to those who are elect exiles, and we'll come back to that in a second, elect exiles of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, and Asia. Um and Bithynia, these places that the church has become exiles, or some of your translations may read aliens or pilgrims of the dispersion. So we are going to take a look at the geography. Where is, where is Peter? Well, during this time, this letter is being written, which was likely between uh, the years 60 and 64 AD. Peter is in Rome. So we're going to fly across the Atlantic and take a look at where we're at here. We're across the Atlantic. This is the Mediterranean Sea. Israel's over here. Modern Turkey's up here. This is Italy, right in this area here. And Rome is in Italy. Uh, and so Peter is in Rome. And during this time, the Apostle Paul is uh, a prisoner there in Rome. And Nero is the the emperor of Rome, and, and we know that we're only a few years before Jerusalem is destroyed and Christians are being persecuted, uh, really starting with the first martyr, Stephen, and the church is being uh, persecuted wherever they're going, they're going, and they are being spread out throughout the land, and Peter ends up in Rome, Paul is imprisoned there in Rome, and Peter is writing to these churches, and the churches are that he's addressed here in the opening verse of 1 Peter are basically spread out through all of Turkey here. We have Cappadocia and Asia. Pontus is up in here. Uh, Bithynia is over in here. Asia's down in here. Galatia's in through the middle here. So basically modern Turkey makes up the areas that Peter is directly addressing as he opens up this letter. Now remember, these churches all started, the early church begins in Israel, down in here, and they're now spreading out throughout the land and coming up through all of this area. They're spreading south, they're spreading east, they're, they're going throughout all the areas. But in this letter, Peter is directly addressing these churches throughout what is known as modern Turkey. 
So back to our text, and the part I want to focus on next is he's writing and he's calling those churches as those who are elect exiles of the dispersion. Now it's an interesting choice of words here. This word dispersion is a word that comes from the Greek word diaspora. Uh, And typically diaspora is a word that would be used of Jews who are outside of their homeland of Israel. And so, and we know that Peter, his primary ministry was to Jewish believers and Paul's primary ministry was to the Gentile world. This letter likely is mainly towards Jewish believers who have been dispersed out of the land of Israel and are spreading out through the land in these different churches and in Pontius and Galatia and these other places. So Peter's writing to them, but he he calls them, very interestingly, they're elect exiles. Now, some of your translations may say pilgrims who are chosen or uh, strangers or aliens who are chosen. And I think the, the elect portion here is uh, not an accident. He's, he's saying that they were chosen to be exiles, which as we get later into the book, is a different mindset. It's a mindset he wants them to have that they are chosen in Christ, but they are also chosen to be exiles of the dispersion. And so it's no accident that they are being spread out through the land. Peter is right out of the gate here indicating that God is in control of all of this. They are chosen to be exiles. So even though they're going through suffering and hard times, it is no accident that they are going through this trials and sufferings that they're going through. They are chosen exiles of the dispersion. Now, as we get into verse 2, we're going to see that they are chosen exiles according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. So he's expanding again on this idea that they have been chosen and they've been a chosen according to the foreknowledge of God. So I think this comes back to this word chosen or elect according to the foreknowledge of God, the Father. They are both believers because of the foreknowledge of God and chosen, but they are also exiles according to the foreknowledge of God, the Father. Now, why would God, the Father, choose them? Why would this, for the suffering that they're going through, for this hard times that they're going through, what purpose would it serve? And And he goes on to explain, in the sanctification, and uh, New American Standard says, by the sanctification of the Spirit. There is something God is at work in their lives doing, a sanctifying work of God through their exile that is going on. Now, what is the goal of this sanctification? What is the goal of, of this work that God is doing in their lives as their exiles? Well, it's for the obedience to Jesus Christ. The obedience to Jesus Christ that comes about through this sanctification of the Spirit that's according to the foreknowledge of God that they're exiles by. So he's introducing right out of the gate in this introduction to the letter, getting them into a right mindset so that they can understand the purpose of their suffering. This, first of all, the suffering's not foreign to God, it's according to his foreknowledge, and it's for the obedience to Jesus Christ. And then this next phrase, which I think is maybe the highlight of where Peter is going with this whole thing. He is going to tell them that it's for the sprinkling with his blood. Now, what's interesting is this is a present tense sprinkling that's going on. And this word for is a purpose. So for the sprinkling with his blood. Now what is meant by that phrase? What, a, what is the sprinkling with his blood? Well, the first thing that maybe would come to our mind is, is that we are cleansed by the blood of Jesus. The moment we put our faith in the, the finished work of Jesus Christ for us, we are cleansed by the blood of Jesus. All sins have been paid for. All debt has been forgiven. But that's a past tense thing, and Peter here is using a a present and future tense of a purpose statement. This suffering, this exile that they're in, and the sanctification that the Spirit's at work within them to do is for the purpose of obedience to Jesus Christ and sprinkling with his blood. 
Well, this sprinkling with his blood phrase is a picture back to the Old Testament ceremonies as the blood of the lamb would be sprinkled on the mercy seat to restore the fellowship of Israel with their God. I believe what Peter is wanting them to have a mindset of is that this sanctification work, this obedience that suffering is bringing about in their lives, is for the sprinkling with his blood. It has to do with a fellowship with their God, a fellowship with Jesus Christ, a friendship, a restoration of relationship, an ongoing relationship with Jesus Christ. Already out of the gate, we're getting a hint of where Peter is wanting to go with this encouraging letter that he's writing to these churches spread out across the land. That the suffering they're going through is not without purpose. They've been chosen by God to go through that. It's according to the foreknowledge of God. And it has a sanctifying work in their lives for obedience to Jesus Christ and for a sprinkling with his blood. That there is a ongoing relational walk, a fellowship that they have with Jesus Christ as they go through this suffering that they it can bring that about in their lives he finishes his greeting off here his salutation with may grace and peace be multiplied to you so they've already experienced grace and peace by putting their faith in jesus christ but peter is giving them a hint a taste that says you know what that grace and peace that you experienced at salvation is just a starting point that there is a multiplication of that that is available to them as believers. So thank you for joining us in today's Bible Bites as we begin in 1 Peter by looking at the opening salutation of verses 1 and 2.